Hello, my name is Zahi Ben Shabbat. I'm a senior prototype architect at AWS, and I'm here to talk about application development for Backstage I.O. on AWS. This is the second chapter focused on architecture design. Before we dive in to the architecture, we want to review some of the assumptions we took in consideration when designing the solution. We implemented our best practices for highly regulated customer, such as financial customers. This includes segregation of access control, distributed environments that spans over multiple accounts and regions, scalability, and network isolation. In addition, we wanted to allow customers to customize components, such as the identity provider or source control, without impacting the other parts of the solution. Above all, we wanted to design an architecture that will make it easier for customers to build and develop applications on AWS. The design considerations are focused on the requirements we gathered from our enterprise customers. Their standards dictated the features we built and how they come together. All of these pointers reflect the design both on the backstage front side, but also on the AWS backend side. The starting point of our architecture is to come up with an abstraction for environments, or more particularly, AWS environments. We wanted to hide the complexity of what does an actual environment includes, but also to support all the configurations we may be required to use an AWS environment. An AWS environment is an abstraction for a development environment in AWS. It's used mostly to represent a particular team, such as dev, QA, prod, and or the classification of the environment, for example, public, private, or internal, AWS environment can be set in various layouts, single multi-region and or single or multi-account. AWS environment provider is the actual AWS account and region which is pre-configured to deploy an application along with all of its required resources and their corresponding runtime environment. Typically consists of VPC, the runtime environment such as ECS or EKS clusters, and the provision in pipelines, which we'll talk about more in further chapters. This is an illustration of the AWS backend of the solution that can be set. It's very easy to add more environment providers for various use cases and use them in the Backstage UI side later. We can see the Backstage solution with its own RDS Postgres database running in its own VPC. However, this is a solution environment and not the application environment that we have discussed so far. We can also see that the one environment provider contains a VPC network layer, the ECS cluster, in this case, and multiple stacks for each application. A stack will have all of the desired resource required by a particular type of application. It should be noted that if you use Terraform, it can also be used instead of CloudFormation. Additionally, we can see the provisioning pipeline for the particular environment provider, which is actually a step function, which deploy a new application for the current environment. We will discuss in further details about the provisioning step function on the next chapter. One last comment is about permissions and access control. To access the resources on the top right box environment, you will need to use the corresponding environment role, in this case, dev role. On the bottom right, you can see the QA role. These are arbitrary roles that can be renamed in any way. The idea behind these roles is that particular role have access to a particular environment so that natively there is a separation of access between the environments. We will talk in further details about authentication and access control in the later chapters.
The frontend is implemented in Backstage and composed of four main plugins. AWS Common plugin is a simple plugin to create and share interfaces across Backstage frontend and back backend plugins. AWS App is the Backstage frontend plugin, which contains all the UI cards and functionality to allow the user to interact with the application and view all the necessary information. AWS Backend App is the Backstage Backend plugin to consolidate all the SDK API calls that are made to the AWS Backend. Lastly, the Scaffolder Action plugins are the Actions plugin, for example, a template to call a provision in pipeline and other actions that need to be implemented to create and deploy and register an application in Backstage. Let's step back and see how is the developer experience looks like when we try to combine both the front-end and the back-end architecture. We can see on the bottom our application developer who interacts with the Backstage plugin UI. The developer chooses a template of an application and click Create. The scaffolder action associated with the template start a series of actions of which a call to provision a pipeline is made to instantiate a new app and also a call to GitLabs is made to create a new application repository. Lastly, a call to the Backstage Catalog to register the new app is made. At this point, the application developer request is created. And now he can clone the new application repo and start making changes and push them. Once a push is made, it causes the application pipeline to trigger and build new image. Our code is then pushed to ECR and then we'll be able to see the latest changes propagated in our application. Thank you for watching this video on application development for Backstage.io on AWS.